If Texas A&M wants to beat the Miami Hurricanes on Saturday, they are going to have to stop their talented rushing attack. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So great to talk about this big matchup, Miami Hurricanes against Texas A&M Aggies. I'm Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. He's Andrew Stefaniak from Locked On Aggies. Andrew, it's so nice to meet you, connect with you. How are you and how excited are you for this game? You know, Alex, it's great getting to getting to do this. It's great talking to you. And I mean, speaking of excitement levels, mine is through the roof. I mean, this is just going to be a fun football game between two teams that have something to prove after a rough year last year. And I just can't wait to see it play out. Yeah, and two teams have gotten a lot better from last year. Like, I was watching Miami on Friday, which meant I, I could watch the Aggies against New Mexico on Saturday. And after watching Miami against Miami, Ohio, I'm like, okay, the Canes look a lot better. Then I watched Texas a Man, they look a lot better. And Bobby Petrino's play calling is pretty saucy. Connor Wigman looked really good. So l- let's start with the positives, Andrew. As far as Texas A&M, how do they win this game on Saturday? And what do you think of the big areas where the Aggies could have an advantage? I think that Texas A&M's wide receivers are some of the best in the country. I think they go toe-to-toe with the Ohio States of the world. I know that Ohio State has great receivers, but I think these Aggies wideouts could go right there with them. You have Evan Stewart, former five-star. You got uh, Anaya Smith. You got Moose Muhammad. And then you have Noah Thomas, the breakout guy who had three touchdowns against New Mexico. Big target, six foot six. Um, And... and I think that's how Texas A&M wins this game. You know, they're going to try and 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 be they're going to try and and do both, run the ball, throw the ball. And I think they're going to be able to to run the ball a little bit, but I think they win this game with the arm of Connor Wigman and the legs of these wide receivers getting open. And I, we talked about it. I know you said that Miami has a extremely talented safety room and some corners that are newer guys, but you feel good about them thus far. Um, And I just think that is where Texas A&M wins this game. And then on top of that, on the flip side of it, on the defense, Texas A&M's defensive line is one of the, you know, it's funny. I uh, saw on Twitter yesterday a video or a, um, like a breakdown of based on snap count, the two deep and the three deep, uh, because Coach Fisher didn't give us one. So thanks, Coach. But um, (laughs) sounds a lot like Cristobal. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And, you know, we have five star defensive linemen in the three deep. It's just, you know, it's just like, I don't think there's many teams that can say that, say that you have five star players in your three deep based off snap count from week one. So it's just the defensive line, the talent there and the wide receivers, I think, are the X factors to an Aggie victory on Saturday. Yeah, you know, I look at it uh, from a Miami Hurricanes point of view, and it, it's it's going to be tough because you talked about AM's defensive line depth, uh, but I, I still think an area where Miami can have some success and on a Mario Cristobal coach team, they will try to have success pounding the rock and running the football and and trying to wear down because uh, I, I, we'll talk about our concerns in a little bit, but I, I'm just a little bit more concerned about the Aggies pass rush than I am about the run stopping. Uh, Miami had obviously different opponent, Miami, Ohio. It's a whole new ball game this week. Uh, Miami had a lot of success running the football up the gut because we talk about how these teams have improved. I think the biggest area, Andrew, where the Hurricanes have improved is just beefing up that offensive line. Offensive line was a major problem spot last year in Cristobal's first season. You know, they go out and they bring in Javion Cohen, a former Alabama starter at left guard. Matt Lee, who's been one of the big stories of the offseason at center from UCF. He, he's got a nasty streak blocking downfield. Um, Inez Cooper, who was... You know, right guard, he was weighing over 400 pounds last year. He's trimmed down to about 348, and now the guy can scoot and he can pull. And, uh, you know, at the tackles, it's been so far so good with Jalen Rivers playing left tackle. He's experienced. You know, one one thing that I'm I'm sure you guys will look at as an X factor is uh, CeCe Maui Noah, a true freshman who starts at right tackle. So, you know, he looks great, but, of course, you're going to, I'm sure, try to throw some things at him that he hasn't seen before. But I, I think a big area where... Miami has uh, an advantage over just about everyone they're going to play this year is not only being able to move bodies with the offensive line, but 
having a four man running back rotation, which is uh, I haven't seen depth like this in a Miami running back room in a couple decades um, to be able to have Henry Parrish, Mark Fletcher, A.J. Allen and Don Chaney, who as long as they're healthy, they've essentially got four starters in their backfield that they can rotate and keep the fresh legs in. So uh, I, I think that's going to be a big area where Miami can hopefully find an advantage on the flip side. If they can't run the ball, they could be in some severe trouble in this game. Uh, and, you know, just w- d- doing little things, Andrew, like um, the Hurricanes over in the previous two seasons, one of the worst tackling teams in the country. Um, they've tried to address that with a lot of defensive coaching changes. The linebackers coach, Derek Nicholson, is getting rave reviews so far. He just came over uh, from Louisville this year. Um, and they bring in a guy like another. They've got two Maui Noah brothers on the team. Kiko, the older brother who plays linebacker, had a really clean performance last week. K.J. Cloyd, who they brought in from Louisville, looked really good. So the tackling so far so good has looked a lot better uh, because they need to finish those tackles. Missed tackles cannot be a reason Miami loses this game. So I, I think we're, we're kind of looking at those things. And I, I guess I'll, I'll ask you just kind of follow up on that, Andrew, as far as um, – as far as A&M's uh, run stopping, you know, we'll, I guess we'll talk about concerns. So what, why don't we get to that in a second? But what, do, do you think something like a, a true freshman at right tackle, is that something you guys are going to look to exploit with the pass rush? You know, I, I think hearing freshmen on the offensive line, you know, it's kind of like a shark coming to blood in the water. It's it just, you know, because I talk about a lot on Locked on Aggies, just how some of the positions it is a no, no to have a true freshman in. And now it is, is the trenches. Now I get right. it like LSU last year, of course, won the sec West and they had a couple of a true freshmen on their offensive line. It can work if you have the right guys. Some people, I always say, I talk about offensive line play is it's just that dog mentality. If you have that dog mentality, I think you can come in and play at any point. Um, but I do definitely think it's going to be a it's going to be something Texas A&M will try to exploit with the pass rush. Uh, pass rush was something against New Mexico. I was hoping to see a lot more sacks against New Mexico than I did last year. Texas A&M's sack total was not where I would have wanted it to be, and it was a number that I wanted to see increase somewhat significantly this year. And, you know, I always talk about if you want to be in a thousand yard receiver and a thousand yard rusher, if you want to have um, all these sacks, a good time to do it is against your three not great non-conference opponents. You know, your uh, New Mexico's and Louisiana Monroe's Abilene Christians. That's when you rack up the yards and the and the sacks and Texas a and I mean, you know, they had a couple, but it was not it was not enough to where I was like, I thought they were just going to be after this quarterback all game long. So I definitely think it's going to be a goal to exploit the the freshman tackle and to you know get around him use your quicker pass rushers Fidel Diggs is the name that comes to mind use him to get around this offensive tackle blow through him and get to Van Dyke in the backfield it's just going to be whether or not you can do it you know I definitely think it's going to be that's going to be the goal it's going to come down to whether or not they're able to get that pass rush I think they will you know, New Mexico runs some funky things that because, you know, obviously they're trying to they were trying to make up for being smaller and, you know, not as physically dominant as Texas A&M. And they, you know, have to do get the ball out quick, do some different things to kind of deal with that. I think that you're going to see Van Dyke sit in the pocket longer than you saw New Mexico's quarterback, which will give the Aggies a better chance to get after him if they're able to get past the tackles, get through the offensive line and do so. 100 percent. We'll talk about areas of concern when we come back is we gave you ways Miami or Texas A&M can win this game. How could this game be lost? We're only getting started on this epic crossover event. I'm Alex Dono of Locked on Canes. He's Andrew Stefaniak of Locked on Aggies. You want to keep it locked right here. Folks, LinkedIn Jobs has just been so amazing for the small business owners out there. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your business. You want to be 100% certain you have access to the best qualified candidates available, and that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. You add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile and spread the word that you're hiring. And people will see it, guys. I've gotten jobs through LinkedIn Jobs before. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. 
It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making this Locked On crossover your first listen today. And folks, on Friday, make sure you're tuned in to Locked On College Football Kickoff Live, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's going to be all over every YouTube channel on the Locked On Network. Uh, I'm pleased to be a part of that. Kenton Gibbs, Drake Toll, uh, the whole cast of characters. Andrew, I'm sure, is going to make some cameos on that this week as we get you guys ready for the big college football slate, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., streaming live on all the YouTube channels here on the platform. Uh, and Andrew, we we got one of the bigger matchups uh, this week. Um, what are your biggest areas of concern for Texas A&M when they line up against Miami? Um, it, it, it's simple as this. You talked about how great you feel about the offensive line up front for the Miami Hurricanes. The biggest question mark going into this football season for the Aggies, I'm talking number one, you know, fire alarm going off concern is the ability to stop the run. Last year, Texas A&M, I mean, it was like running through Swiss cheese. They couldn't stop a traffic cone. And now, you know, this year, you have to make that change. You have to make that change to be able to stop the run. If you want to, you know, go from five and seven to nine and three or, you know, eight, eight and four, you have to make that change. And against New Mexico, I, I talked about it on my show, this is what I want to see. I want to see, I don't want to see them be able to move the football period on the ground. Right. I talked about leaving that football game. Did I feel bet? Did my confidence about Texas A&M's ability to stop the run increase? It did. It did a little bit, but not enough to where I feel you know I feel completely good about it. So now going into this game against Miami, where like you said, these offensive linemen are gonna blow through you, big strong guys, and then a talented running back room full of a whole bunch of players that can rack up yards, do different things. It's definitely my biggest concern is can Texas A&M stop the Miami running attack? If they can stop the rushing attack, I feel pretty confident that, um, you know, that the Aggies can, can, can potentially go take care of business. But if Miami is able to run through them like, like it's nothing, it's a big concern for me. And the funny part about it is I talked about how talented this defensive line is and the linebacker room, you know, you got some different guys working in and out there. Um, you had a true freshman playing a lot of snaps against New Mexico, which is another position I don't love having a true freshman, but mm. he held his own, looked good. Um, but the way I look at this is you have the talent to be able to stop the run. You just got to do it. I mean, it was one of the biggest, you know, things the Aggies tried to fix in the offseason. Um, like I said, I feel better about it after the New Mexico game, but I want to see that next step against Miami. And if we don't see it, I think this is a game Texas A&M could lose, and I think it's it's going to be a concern going forward for the Aggies if you can't stop the run. Yeah, on the Miami side, um, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a couple because one of them we already touched on a little bit. Uh, Miami's cornerbacks against that very deep Texas A&M receiver room, and and Andrew was right. I mean, listen, his scouting report checks out with mine. That's one of the most talented receiver rooms in the country. And you know, the Hurricanes were relatively untested against Miami, Ohio, because uh, they weren't given uh, Brett Gabbard a lot of time to throw. So you know, they weren't really tested that much downfield. Uh, Miami has veteran safeties. I mean, Cam Kinchins is uh, is among the very best in the country. First team All-American last year. James Williams has all the potential in the world. He's just a little bit hot and cold. Uh, he can be inconsistent at times, but pretty much all new faces, except for Daryl Porter Jr., who we like, but all new faces for the most part in Miami's cornerback room. And so going up, especially against a six foot six guy like Noah Thomas, that that's going to give me like sweats when I uh, when, before I wake up on Saturday morning as to how that's going to go down. So Miami's cornerback room against Texas A and M's receivers, and sometimes the best way to stop the pass is to pressure the passer. So that's going to start up front for the Canes. But then offensively, Andrew, you know Miami didn't really show a whole lot. Uh, maybe by design, in the downfield passing game last week. And you could say, why would you when Miami, Ohio was giving them everything underneath and they couldn't stop the run? You know, Tyler Van Dyke only threw 20-plus uh, yards down the field on two separate occasions. So, uh, And, you know, for as much as I think the Hurricanes can have some success running the football, you're not going to have that if you can't stretch the field. So they're going to have to stretch the field this week. 
Uh, you know, Tyler Van Dyke, uh, Miami's starting quarterback, he's, you know, healthy enough to play. He has been, you know, dealing with an apparent finger issue, but I, I think it's something that I think eight days between games, uh, he's going to be in, in better shape uh, Saturday than he was last Friday. But just the, the question mark of throwing downfield, Andrew, because if the Hurricanes can't do that, they can't find success. Something else I wanted to pick your brain on, because both of these teams have important new assistant coaches. And I think a great matchup is going to be Bobby Petrino, who is the the veteran of all veterans calling plays on one side versus Miami's young defensive coordinator who worked miracles at Marshall last year in Lance Guidry. I think that's going to be an incredible matchup. And, you know, talk a little bit about Petrino. And I know a lot of folks out there talk about that dynamic with Jimbo no longer calling plays. You know, has anybody stepped on anybody's toes over there? You know, I think it's funny. The the. The Texas A&M fans, that that narrative, it's it's become one that like people are starting to get annoyed by, which mm. which I don't understand because I get it. I mean, from a from a perspective of of the national perspective and other other fan bases, it's like, I mean, you know these these guys are are are, are firecracker personalities. You know, they, they they like to, and it's definitely a question mark of how that was going to kind of gel together, mesh together. Um, and you know, everybody's been joking. Like it was funny, the AD over at Texas A&M. Uh, he was joking and saying like, "I need to, I need to, you, I need to buy uh, boxing gloves for Jimbo and Coach Petrino," and, and which is hilarious. But I mean, so far so good. It's gone smooth. I think the coaching, st- I'm, they, you know, they talked about they do a lot of their planning throughout the week for Saturday. So while you know, Coach Petrino is up there, you know, doing everything. Coach Fisher puts in his two cents throughout the week, and you know, it's still a back and forth. I think more than. It's not just like he doesn't have any part to do with this. Right. And, um, you know, so I haven't – the stepping on the toes thing could have become reality. I could see that down the road. But right now, I, it hasn't become an issue yet. I think it's it, – it, the, the higher likelihood that becomes an issue is if stuff goes poorly, if you start losing football games. Right. Um, right. right now, it's not a concern for me. But I think Coach Petrino – I've talked about it. I, I think it's a it's a – to it, the difference from bringing in Coach Petrino, it's we're talking a couple wins. Um, I mean, not just based off the five and seven. I'm talking like I think it could make Texas A&M a, a nine win team just based off what he's done in his career as an offensive play caller. He's a genius yeah. when it comes to football, and I, you know I think that we already saw a lot of positives. And like you said, I think the offense was a little bit boring, a little humdrum, a little little you know not crazy interesting on Saturday because. Why would you show everything? Why, you know, I talked about um, Anaya Smith, who's like the do it all gadget guy for the Aggies. Why, you know, I, they didn't have anything really crazy drawn up for him. And I said on my show, I said, he's going to have something. I, I predicted, I think Anaya Smith is going to have some kind of play where he breaks something crazy and takes it to the house against Miami just because I think they saved a play for him. They love getting him the ball, whether it's a, you know, a jet sweep or a little screen pass. They love getting the ball in his hands and letting them make plays. They didn't do it last week, so I think you're going to see something like that happen this week. I think it's going to be a fun matchup, like you said, the young young gun D- DC over at Miami versus the wily old veteran and Coach Petrino. It's going to be a fun matchup, and I can't wait to see them, you know, go at it with their football minds. Yeah, and like you know, when we we do our uh, our weekly spot with Athletic Brewing for the game changer of the week, I went with Lance Gidry as my game changer because th- this is going to be uh, this is going to be an important game. His most important game is Miami's DC so far, and something that Gidry a couple things Gidry excels at, which I hope can carry over into this game. Third down defense, he had by far the best third down defense last year at Marshall, and and Miami had uh, I think among the best in the country week one against Miami, Ohio last week, uh, but also being able to put pressure on quarterbacks without blitzing. Cause I think that's one of those things you, you can't sell out too much and leave your cornerbacks on islands in a matchup like this. So I think that's going to be important. We're going to talk X factors when we come back. All right. So we got a lot more to come. Alex Dono from locked on Canes, Andrew Stefaniak from locked on Aggies epic crossover event continues right here on the locked on podcast network. Speaking of Epic, folks, get those ticket deals at game time. I'm starting to see now tickets for under 70 bucks, certainly under 100 bucks from Miami against Texas A&M this weekend. They got your last-minute deals at game time. This is the spot. 
buying last minute tickets should not be stressful. You know, you wonder you're on some of these other sites. Am I getting a good deal? You're always getting a good deal at game time, guys. Flash deals and last minute tickets are a huge thing. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of an event in your area. And they show you images of your seat views right on the site, guys, which is really, really important. And the game time guarantee. That's the money guarantee here. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on college for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much for making this Locked On crossover your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts, available free on YouTube. And, of course, this episode available on Locked On Aggies and Locked On Canes. Alex Dono alongside Andrew Stefaniak. Uh, Andrew, can you give me any X-Factor players, guys who maybe low-key could be the difference in a Texas A&M victory this week? Um, I'll give you a couple. I was going to say, I was going to say, I'll give you three, but I was like, I have, I, I don't want to, I don't want to limit the number. I'll, so I'm just going to, so I, it, it's boring. It's bland, but Connor Wigman, I yeah. talked about, he has yet to make a mistake in his college career. We saw him in five games last season. We saw him against New Mexico, you know, never made a mistake uh, it being an interception. I mean, I'm sure he's, he's made some, some throws that are a little questionable, but they haven't been picked off yet. And, I think what we what we saw from him against New Mexico, it was truly just like wow. Some of these throws he made were just incredible. He he is so talented, former five star recruit, and I, I don't think he's been given the 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 credit, the hype that he deserves. And I think he's starting to gain a little bit after what we saw last week. And this is an opportunity for him. You go and you you beat a really good Miami Hurricane football team, and you throw for three hundred and four. You know, I mean, you're you're gaining some serious respect in the college football world, and I think he has the ability to do that. I mean, and you're gonna if you're doing it, you're doing it against one of the better secondaries in college football. So, I think it he is gonna be a big X factor. I think you can't make a mistake. You got to read those safeties. I talked about that yesterday on my show. You have to read the safeties well. You can't make a mistake. Let one of those guys' kitchens, you know, come in and pick your pass off. Can't happen. You got to read them well. And you have to then funnels into the receivers. Evan Stewart, once again, one of the most talented receivers in college football. Younger guys, a sophomore. Then you got Anias Smith, who is an older guy. Moose is an older guy. And uh, Noah Thomas is still a younger guy. So you have a mix of veterans and young guys in the wide receiver room, but they're going to have to get open. You know, you can't rely on Connor Wigman throwing you open. You got to get open on your own and make some throws easier on your quarterback. That's, I think, the offensive. X factors there, but then, I mean, you hate to say the whole offense, but at the end of the day, the running backs too. I mean, I think that you have to have balance. Like I talked about, you got to be able to run the ball. You got to be able to complete it through the air. And then on the defensive side of the ball, my two guys are defensive lineman, Walter Nolan, talented guy, put up a lot of stats last week against New Mexico, former five-star. And it's funny. I mean, you used to talk about Texas a and You know, that that shows why this team can be so good is because every player we're talking about is a former five-star. And I see that similarity in Miami. A lot of talent over there as well. But, you know, Walter Nolan is a big-time talented player that many think are, would break onto the scene this year. And what I saw last weekend against New Mexico, I think he's on his way to doing that. And against a talented Miami offensive line, I think he needs to, you know, push back against their push. Yeah. And then I guess lastly is going to be – um corner Josh DeBerry who transferred from Boston College I didn't think he was going to start I until the week I did I had my you know my starters planned and uh, coach Fisher like I said never gave us an official depth chart I had my guys I thought was going to start and then Josh DeBerry goes out there and absolutely dominates I, I think he got a little bit hoodooed out of the SEC defensive player of the week frankly based off his performance and I think he's going to come out and do some special things against Miami. And I think he has to. You have to guard the Miami receivers well, try and pick off Van Dyke. You got to do the right things. And I think to succeed on the defensive side of the ball, 
Walter Nolan and Josh DeBerry are going to be X factors when it comes to winning this game for Texas A&M. That's really good. So my my first X factor, I go on offense, uh, and what you were saying about Anaya Smith, it reminded me of Tyler Harrell, who's uh, Miami's fastest wide receiver, just transferred over. He was at the Alabama last year, had a really good uh, few years at Louisville before going to Bama. Uh, he, he was not utilized a lot last week. He only had one catch, had limited snaps. But if this is the game where you need to open the playbook – and you need to stretch the field, Tyler Harrell is a huge X factor because nobody can cover him one-on-one. So obviously he's got to actually catch footballs, but he runs a 4-2, 40-yard dash. So he, he's a guy that can, if he's making catches, fantastic. Even if he's working as an effective decoy, can open things up. So Harrell, to me, is a massive, massive X factor this week. Uh, sticking with the offense, you know, I talked about uh, Miami having uh, one of the most talented freshman running backs in the country, Mark Fletcher. Um, kind of seeing him tested more picking up blitzes and pass protection. Um, he's, he's definitely got the build for it because he's, you know, six foot two, 225 pounds. So he's, he's big enough to protect his quarterback, but he's going to be seeing things and going up against players that he hasn't uh, seen before at this level against the Aggies. So that's going to really determine how much Mark Fletcher can stay on the field. Um, defensively, uh, yeah, I already talked about James Williams. So let me bring up somebody else. Um, if, Leonard Taylor, who's Miami's most talented defensive lineman, if he has a Leonard Taylor game, Miami can win. Or if, you know, Leonard Taylor, who's a little bit uh, a little bit hot and cold, you know, he's got some uh, conditioning I- issues after I think it was from uh, an injury that he dealt with during spring football. Uh, he only played 15 snaps last week. You know, if this is a game that Leonard Taylor can take over, uh, that can make Miami's lives a lot easier. And then, Andrew, with, with execution, because I, I go back and again, Very different teams from last year. It's hard to take too much from the Aggies or Miami last year, but an area where Miami failed miserably last year was in the red zone. Red zone execution. Uh, They've got to come away with points, preferably touchdowns when they get inside the Aggies 20. And uh, and no muffed punts this year because that was another thing that hurt the Hurricanes last year. So the special teams have to be on point. And with all that said, time to get to our game predictions. And, man, I have a feeling uh, we're both going to have a pretty tight game here based on the conversation. Uh, what, what do you what are you thinking, Andrew, final score on Saturday? You know, I I see it tight, and, and so I'm just trying to decide, do I see it high scoring or low scoring? That's the thing for me as well, yeah. And, and yeah. it's – so I think for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to go kind of medium. I think Texas A&M wins. I think it's a barn burner, a fun football game, instant classic – I'm going to go, I think Texas A&M wins 28-24. Mm, that's very, see, I'm going to go almost the same score. I'm going to go the other way, 27-24, because if there's something that I think about when I talk about executing the little things, if it does come down to field goal kicking, uh, you know, Miami's got a, a Groza mm-hmm. finalist uh, in uh, in Andy Borigalis, who I, I definitely trust if there is a winning kick type of situation. So I'm going to go with the slight edge to Miami 27-24. And uh, I think it's no secret why the, the betting lines have tightened up. I think uh, Texas A&M on FanDuel is uh, is in the four to four and a half range right now. It was at minus seven and a half a little while ago. Then Miami had kind of crept up to plus three and a half. The line seems to be settling in the four, four and a half range. So I think it's going to be a three or, or four point game. I'm going to give the slight edge to Miami. And a whole lot of fun. Andrew, uh, let people know. I mean, they're already watching this on Locked On Aggies, but let people know what you have coming up and where they can find you for those watching on Locked On Canes. Yeah, of course. Those of you Locked On Canes listeners, you can head on over to Locked On Aggies. We've been breaking down the game uh, myself all week. It's going to be a fun one. So, yeah, if, you, if you're if you curious to hear my you know more of my in-depth thoughts on ball game, head on over to Locked On Aggies, and I've been talking about it all week. So that's where you can find me. You can, you can find me on YouTube, anywhere you get your podcasts at Locked on Aggies. Yeah, and, and by the way, huge shout-out to the Texas A&M folks. If you find us over at Locked on Canes, we, we love talking about this matchup. I mean, second straight year, uh, it's been a lot of fun. So, yeah, Locked on Canes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, and thank you guys so much. This has been an epic Locked on crossover event right here on the Locked on Podcast Network.